All right, beep, let's do this. First thing first, the name is the LUI. Secondly, the game is the game of bodybuilding, more precisely, uh, Mr. Olympia. Thirdly, the very subject, 10 years ago, a very decade already from this picture. It was the very first send out for this gentleman, a cut above Jay Cutler. So more or less a week out, Mr. Olympia 2016. Allow me to revisit with you guys uh, this iconic and quite uh, symbolic event of 10 years ago. Let's get right into it. We will review the top 10. That was another blonde guy at the 10th uh, position. A giant from uh, Germany, Gunter Schlierkamp. Contest weight usually was around you know, 290, 300 pounds as uh, he was claiming he was a tall man and really a gigantic one. Now he was 10th, uh, admittedly, uh, you know, a uh, disappointing uh, placing for this guy who was challenging Big Ron a few years prior to that. To be noted, he has beaten Ronnie Coleman on a secondary show in 2002. Uh, and there was a big upset. They gave him number five in that Olympia. So pretty much to correct themselves, IFBB acknowledged the reality that he was indeed better than the real Mr. O and he won after that in a secondary show. Over here though, of, you can see that he was not replicating the very famous sharpness he had specifically downstairs. It shows uh, the feathers are not there. He looks a bit soft. And uh, to be noted, uh, as you guys uh, probably know, the judges sometimes do not compare you to other bodybuilders, but rather to your old self. If they saw you uh, sharp and crisp, they will ding you if you're off by 5%, and indeed uh, he was, right? Unfortunately for him, he was pretty much going down in the IFEB. Not the best year uh, for him, and the back was absolutely uh, not the same one we saw in 2002. This was hard. The glutes were, were diced. The hamstrings are absolutely soft. 10 position he got uh, that year. Next guy in line at the uh, ninth position this time around is a guru nowadays, very known, Mr. Dennis uh, James. Now, these are indeed pictures from uh, Mr. Olympia. Few of them will not be uh, from this event. However, they will be from the same year. This was, again, Mr. Olympia, if I'm not mistaken, uh, same year. You can notice he is absolutely not in shape compared to previous years. To be noted, Dennis James was probably one of the first guys to publish his progress pics uh, prior to an event, specifically in Mr. Olympia, uh, actually uh, on social media, even back then, right? He started in, in the middle of the 2000s. And uh, as a lot of people stated, he looked crazy in his prep pics, very granity and so on and so forth. Unfortunately, he missed the peak week. He overdone it and he crashed at the end of, of, of the show. He looked this soft, right? Uh, this picture, though, was not from Mr. Olympia. It was from the same year, though. This was the New York Pro, if I'm not mistaken. And, unfortunately, his bubble gut was not uh, loyal. Uh, this also, I think, was from the from the same year. Well, it was absolutely from the same year, but I think it was from the New York Pro, right? Proceed, shall we? These were the progress picks I was referring to. It was definitely harder, uh, more granity. I mean, on the top, he was just amazing. The combo he had, you know, arms, delts, and chest were absolutely uh, mesmerizing. Uh, number eight, another giant uh, blonde uh, from uh, Germany, Marcus Ruhl. Even though he was eight at this event, believe me, he was still the crowd fav uh, favorite. If you guys remember, when this guy was stepping on stage, the crowd was going Ruhl, right? Like crazy. It was a... Reminiscent of 10 years prior to this, they were uh, screaming Nasser. These guys love uh, Big Giant. Nowadays, it is Big Grammy, right? Uh, so, yeah, he was going, unfortunately, down in his career, especially in the wheels department. You can absolutely notice that he is not as conditioned. The details are not as loyal as the upstairs area. And for that, he has been dinged to the eighth uh, position. Nonetheless, he was a giant absolutely to be saluted going all out actually he is still big until today and that peak he has is absolutely not oil it is absolutely loyal mr mike Sur is absolutely to be properly uh, saluted 
There we go. The next guy in line, he was already a veteran uh, back then. So at the seventh position, Mr. Tony Freeman, a.k.a. Uh, the X-Man, right? The X-Man, because uh, his body actually resembles an X. I mean, he has crazy, he does X, right? Crazy wheels. And the upper body, the V shape, is absolutely uh, proper. To be noted, actually, he started competing quite late in his career because of, of this little detail here. It doesn't show, but he has a back tier, which basically hinder him from competing for, uh, for the longest time. However, he was absolutely rolling high, even at an advanced age. Uh, he reminds me nowadays, especially in this pose, uh, of Sean Roden. Same wheels, same uh, body morphology, if he asks me. Absolutely to be properly uh, executed front lat spread, right? Next guy in line, uh, we are already at the sixth uh, place. So at that time, he received $30,000. This guy was also going down, unfortunately, at this period. He had better years. He was very, very close to the top. He was pretty much in the mix between Ronnie Coleman and Jay Cutler. Uh, this guy he was already uh, always uh, top three. Gustavo uh, Badel, absolutely hard, uh, crazy. He was probably the hardest uh, back then, and he was joined a little bit later with Branch Warren. Branch Warren, to be noted, in this year, he placed twelfth. Uh, right, he was twelfth position in in this year, if I'm not mistaken. Proceed, haha, uh, shall we? There you go. So, uh, unfortunately, they compared him to himself. He was very, very good. Downstairs uh, section became a little bit soft, not loyal. So, they gave him $30,000 and uh, the sixth spot, right? Proceed, uh, shall we? Melvin Anthony, if you guys recall. This guy burst into the scene, if I'm not mistaken, in 1995. He won the Mr. California, if I'm not mistaken. To be noted, he was the training partner of Mr. Chris Cormier in 1996, right? He was a rookie. Uh, nonetheless, this guy uh, was uh, frequently compared to Flex Wheeler. He resembled him in several features. He was also one of the best uh, posers. Until today, people try to emulate this guy. He was absolutely an artist uh, on stage. As I mentioned, he resembles uh, Flex in several poses. The bellies are reminiscent of the Sultan of symmetry he was doing uh, this uh, split alongside uh, Ronnie Coleman right uh, actually and he was competing until an old age absolutely uh, to be saluted one problem he had uh, we can compare him with today Cedric McMillan he was not dialing all the time so he was a hit and miss but when he dialed in he was good and he deserved uh, $38,000 for the fifth place uh, uh, back then the back was absolutely loyal. Again, I mean, some cues reminiscent of Mr. Flex uh, Wheeler. There we go. Properly executed abs and thighs. Oh boy, Dexter Jack. This was probably in 1950 for all I know. <laughs> anyway, Dexter Jack was always in the scene. As I, as I told you previously, competed in about 80 shows and in 75 of them was top five, right? And this year was not an exception. He was uh, at the fourth uh, fourth uh, place. I mean, wow. Uh, of course, today's version is rather more crisp, but the level went high and he followed along, right? Back then, this was enough to be a uh, top four, but this year, uh, you will not see this version. He will be bigger. Details will be even more uh, crisp. I mean, some, some valleys, some ridges all over the place. Everything has been added. Everything has been fashioned and it's just hard right but back then he was already uh you know he was already nicknamed uh, the blade and and for good reason wow i mean <laughs> you recognize this pose but right now it's even more sharper and believe me it's not because that the pictures are more hd it is where it is he progressed back then he was already coming uh, very very strong who would have known that this guy two years from now uh, would have been uh, mr olympia right absolutely to be saluted mr uh, the blade and this guy, this guy, we're all awaiting this year. We've seen quite few, um, basically, preview a preview picture. He's trying to regain somehow the shape. This was not the best shape, by the way, right? But it was a good place, and he got $60,000 for this third place. And some say he should have placed higher, meaning higher than Ronnie Coleman. You guys can geek out about that. 
Uh, you will notice that his legs were big back then, bigger than what they are right now. Right now, to be noted, uh, well, at the, at the last show at least, this uh, basically belly, this kind of roundness was a little bit uh, not there in a sense. To be noted, he had an injury in the quadriceps, right? So that's it. Nonetheless, if he comes in very close to the shape, he is definitely in the mix, in my opinion, for the top six uh, this year. Absolutely to be saluted. And he will be uh, 43 uh, this year. The back was absolutely uh, loyal. You know what? Quite frankly, I think that he was uh, somehow uh, misjudged. He could have, he should have actually been higher than Ronnie Coleman with all due respect. That is a bit of a politic because this shape was, was enough to be next to Jay Cutler. Look at him. I mean, wow. He was absolutely dialed in properly. The back was loyal. Ronnie, by the way, talking about Ronnie, was uh, grooming this guy as the next Mr. Olympia. He said, bro, he has all... Um, all the features necessary. I mean, the, the widest uh, delts uh, back then, Christmas tree was loyal, the Belize, baby please, right? To be noted, this is the famous year 2007. As you guys know, a lot of people call him uh, the, uh, the uncrowned Mr. Olympia 2007 uh, versus uh, Jay Cutler, right? And quite frankly, I made a video about this and wow, uh, you, you can give him a knot and I will not be disappointed. I, I, I'm telling you, I mean, he could have been Mr. Olympia 2007. It is very, very uh, debatable. Anyway, let's proceed, haha, -ha, uh, shall we? So these were the two uh, last men uh, standing, right? Ronnie Coleman looking at Jay Cutler, probably thinking, bro, did you uh, beat me or am I getting my ninth Sanda, which will make me pretty much the record holder even more Sandow's uh, than Lee uh, Haney, right? Uh, the tension uh, was high. Uh, if you, you know, compare um, Ronnie Coleman with his previous years, of course, he's still big. The legs was absolutely amazing. The only cue you can get from the front is a little bit of flatness at the end. He started uh, to fade. But believe me, his problem was not uh, from the front. It's not the front who made him lose. He was still there. His legs were still big. Uh, the bicep was good and before being flat, I mean even the chest everything was on line, right? There we go. So the final decision was given to Jay Cutler who was a bit of a shocker and also some nostalgia already because we're seeing Ronnie Coleman uh, Basically lose in a pretty much a generation right in, in, in nine years. It was it was absolutely a, a sight uh, to be mesmerized by uh, proceed, shall we? So this was the issue, actually, why Ronnie Coleman uh, lost, as you guys know, since 1983, since uh, Samir Banuj, we pretty much say that the shows are one from the back, and this was no exception. The blonde Jay Cutler brought uh, a solid back. Details are not his strength, but it was just massive, just rocky crazily uh, conditioned from the back and the symmetry was loyal. Ronnie Coleman though, you can clearly see, especially the left side started to melt. It is very noticeable in this pose. Definitely the symmetry is not there. And also the hardness, hardness, uh, nothing. I mean, he made him look bad and it was clear that he's gonna lose uh, this one, unfortunately. Also, the left tricep sweep started for, for the first year to, to get smaller. It was even more obvious in the 2007, meaning the next year where he tried to come back, but this year you can see some cues that this, this left side is somehow not following. Some people argued and tried to speculate about some nerve damage. Uh, I don't know. Nonetheless, it was his Achilles, uh, baby, please uh, heal, right? Uh, let's see another uh, shot. What do we have here? Okay, from the front, yes, he was not as hard as usual. But then again, he was still big. Uh, Jay Cutler, though, uh, did his homework. He came in solid. He prepared. He was pretty much himself. And he was a winner, uh, even in this pose, right? Prop up. What do we have again? Uh, I think it's another shot. This was uh, probably uh, from uh, the, um, actually the finals, if I'm not mistaken. Don't take my word for it. Nonetheless, it was from the same year as far. As I know, we can see well, but the left side of Roni was absolutely not uh, loyal. Another shot from the same uh, night, again, we see that the left side of Roni. So pretty much, to sum it all, 
it was pretty much his Achilles heel uh, softness and the left side is pretty much melting. So you guys know that Ronnie Coleman debatably has the best back ever. It's between him and Dorian Yates. Some say it's Dorian, sometimes it's him, but you can't go wrong by saying that Dorian and Rory Coleman have the best backs ever. And at the end of, of his career, unfortunately, that back was not loyal. I think Flex Magazine did like the top five backs and Jay Cutler is top five as well. So this guy is not to be knocked. He held his own, you know, versus, you know, Kai Green, uh, Phil Heath, Victor Martinez because of his size. His back is not very detailed, but it is just solid. It is thick, it is large. It is uh, to be properly uh, saluted, right? That's it. So that was the year that ushered the reign of uh, Mr. Olympia, Jay Cutler, the cut above. Now, needless to say that the level went up. This was a decade ago. It seems like yesterday, but nowadays uh, guys are bigger and even sharper in that top six specifically. Salute you wherever you are. Don't forget to like the video. I'll be in for your comments. Be absolutely uh, saluted, guys.